And question number 19, this is a very beautiful one. I'll just show you. See, the first thing is that, let me just explain, there's a rod and it's rotating about this vertical axis with an angular velocity omega. So it's something like a conical pendulum, but the entire rod has the mass. And here, what is the parameter? It says to find theta, the angle with respect to vertical, the question has done it for you. You know, equate the rate of change of angular momentum about the center of mass. So this is the rate of change of angular momentum. This itself is given. So that part, you are saved. It's not the angular momentum, but rate of change of angular momentum. However, about which point? About the center of mass. And what is rate of change of angular momentum? Of course, the torque. So the question is saying you equate this thing to the torque about the center of mass. And from that, you calculate the value of cos theta. So where do we begin from? We need to begin from the free body diagram. Let's see. First of all, realize this particular center of mass is moving in a circular motion of radius what? L by 2 sine theta. Okay, so let's go with the free body diagram. So to start with the free body diagram, this is very beautiful and just pay attention. You know, what are the free body diagram? One is mg, of course, I'll give the name. Other is fh and fv, that has been given. Now, think carefully. The center of mass is moving in a circular motion on a horizontal plane. So that means net force along the y direction has to be zero. So that will give us the first condition. And what about FH? FH is in fact the sole agent of centripetal force because the center of mass is moving in circle. So that's going to be FH is m omega square times the radius and that radius is L by 2 sine theta. So we calculated FV, we calculated FH. And the next job, the torque due to these forces about the center of mass. Okay, so here, you know, this is FV acting at this point in this direction, that's FV. And here is FH acting in this direction. And this angle is theta. That's a straightforward one. So the torque about the center of mass would be generated only by FV and FH. And one more thing, just be very careful. It says, look at the direction. To find theta, equate the rate of change of angular momentum and what is the direction? Direction going into the paper. So this particular thing has the direction cross into the paper. So that you need to be very careful. So what we'll do, the torque due to these forces about the center, the torque due to FV will be cross, the torque due to FH will be dot. So this is going to be L by 2 FV sine theta minus L by 2 FH cos theta because the angle would be 90 minus theta. So sine 90 minus theta will be cos. They are subtracted because this torque is cross, this torque is dot, and this torque should be equals to what was given, ml square by 12, omega square, sine theta, cos theta. A little bit of calculation, all just cancellation you require to do, and you would get the value of cos theta as 3g by 2 omega square l. Option number 4 is the correct one. It's a beautiful one. What doing? The next. The next question. Question number 20. Let's see. There's a block of mass 1.9 kg. It is at rest at the edge of a table of height 1 meter. And a bullet of mass 0.1 kg comes, collides with the block and sticks. Initially, the bullet had a speed 20 meter per second. At least, basis this much data, we can calculate the velocity of the bullet block combined system just after the collision. 
So how can we do that? The block initial momentum is zero, but the initial momentum of the bullet, let's say, 0.1 kg, 20 meter per second. So that will be 2 kg meter per second, initial momentum of bullet. Eventually, the bullet block will be one system, 2 kg, and let's say V is the velocity of that combined system. So this V will be 1 meter per second. So all done, the velocity just after the collision. But the story is something more after that. And let's just see a quick figure. And that's how it comes here. This is that given arrangement. And this moves with 1 meter per second. All right. And there is also the height which is given. Let's see. The height of the table. Yes. 1 meter. The second line you can see. And this is 1 meter. The height of the table. And apart from that. This, of course, is the ground. That's great. Now, this system will move parabolically and it would land here. Now, we need to calculate the kinetic energy. I don't think so there's any issue because it's a case of mechanical energy conservation. So, the initial kinetic energy, that's one half, mass has become 2 kz into v square plus mass is 2 into g okay g has been given as 10 h is 1 that's the initial mechanical energy and this will be equals to one half mass into v square but we have to calculate the kinetic energy so this would be the entire thing the final kinetic energy so this is 20 plus 1 21 joule option number 4 that's the correct one question number 21 to 25 that's integer based. You'll not find any option. You need to solve the value. So let's see. Question number 21. Now here, what does it say? You see, there's a block that moves up an inclined plane. So let me just make that as per the figure. And if you can see the question, it also says that the inclined plane is inclined at 30 degree with horizontal. And there's a block. Initially, it has been given a velocity v0 goes up and comes back. And while it comes back, it returns with a velocity v0 by 2. So clearly, it's a case of rough surface. And that's what we need to calculate, the value of coefficient of friction. And that has to be calculated in this way, that you need to report the value of L. And how is L defined? Mu equals to L by 1000. So what I'll do is that, let's say that the block goes up by a distance s. One thing I can do, that I'll take the entire round trip, initial goes and comes back. The change in potential energy is zero. So what's the work done by friction? Minus mu mg cos of 30 into s, that's the distance. So this much is the work done by friction in the ascent part multiplied by 2. The same work would be done by friction because in both the case that's doing negative work. So work done by that particular friction would be change in kinetic energy 1 half m v0 square by 4 minus of v0 square. Now the trouble is that this equation also has s and S has to be eliminated. That's not a problem. What you can do is that now consider just the ascent. If you consider the ascent, work done by friction is minus mu mg cos 30 multiplied by S during the ascent. And that is change in kinetic energy, which is minus half m v naught square, right? But there is also a change in potential energy and that's going to be plus mg s sine 30 because the height of the block rises by s sine 30. So it's all done. With these two equations you can solve and just a simple division will allow you to do and the value of L will come out to be 346. Yes, there's a little bit of calculation part but conceptually 
It's straightforward, though it's a nice one.